Hello everyone and welcome back to the What A Thought Podcast. Did I almost butcher the name even though I sat here for like 30 seconds thinking about <laughs> how to start this podcast? Yes. Yes, I almost did. Now I have to burp. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I have my water with me uh, and I took a sip right before I started and it was so cold. And I know it's cold because I poured it right from my little I got a little Brita because otherwise I don't <laughs> otherwise I don't have any like drinkable water nearby and I think the idea of being someone who's living in a space and buying like a case of water bottles is a little dumb I've seen people do it and I get really confused like if you're a sports person and you're out and about and like you don't want to have a bottle that you have to like bring back with you or something okay I guess should still have a refillable bottle you know a container or something there's water fountains there are no water fountains here that's the thing in like my building that i live in or else i wouldn't have a brita i would just go walk to the little water fountain and fill up my cup and i would do that every time willingly i would but they don't have them on because covid and i like i understand I get that. Uh, it's a very easy spot to spread germs if you, like, if any single human being drinks from it. Because you, you you knew someone. When you were a kid, in, like, any point of school, you knew that there was a human being that would just drink right, like, as the water comes out, like, from that spot right there, and then so all the dribble water would just fall back over where the water is coming out, and it was this weird cycle of germs that you just had to accept existed. And no one wants that. You don't want that cycle of germs. <laughs> no siree. Uh, but it is what it is, I guess. What is... What am I looking at here? My... I was looking at my, my screen just now for the recording, you know, because I got to make sure that it's all going well. And I looked at it and I said, is this right? And it is. I didn't realize how it was set. I didn't set it correctly. I wanted it in long, like, chunks of minutes so that it would show, like, eight minutes at a time, but it's only showing, like, two. So it's moving across really quickly, and I thought it was broken. <laughs> but you you knew someone who slobbered like that. It was gross. It was very, very gross. That's not... No one wants that. No one wants that at all. Uh, yeah. But uh, if that weren't the case, I would go fill up my bottles. Because then they would be on. Because people wouldn't, you know, there would be human beings that don't drink like that. But there are too many that do. There are too many human beings that drink like that. And sadly, we all have to pay the price for it. Unless, of course, it's one of the fancy-smanchy water bottles. Fountains. Not water bottles. Water bottle fountains. Yep. Fountains, yes, of water. Mm-hmm. Yo, this is going so well. Um, unless it's one of those fancy fountains that has the, like, new attachment where you can fill your water bottles which I think is amazing. It's so fantastic. It's so dope. I also really just enjoy the little counter where it's like, this is how many plastic bottles you've saved by using this machine. And it, it doesn't tell you the start date. <laughs> it does not tell you when, when the first bottle was filled, but it tells you that you've filled like 768, some random number like that. And you're like, oh, that makes me feel good. And then you'll see like 10 others around the place and you're like wow we're really saving the world and it's like i wish it were that simple that's not the that's not the segue or anything it's just me commentating on that um yeah let's see what's actually in this list of things uh oh <laughs> hey dudes because i've never I don't know, I've never been near a bathroom that a woman is in to know if this is some weird shit that they do too, but hey dudes, don't moan when you piss. <laughs> Ayo, what the fuck is that about? I have seen, seen? No, heard, and I wish I didn't have ears. <laughs> I've heard way too many folk just moaning when they piss, and it's so upsetting to my soul, because I'm like, hey, do you understand that you're not the only one here like hey good for you if you live alone in like an apartment and the walls are like 
I don't know, you're, you've done something so that no one can ever hear you in there, which makes it sound like you're a murderer. But say you've got that, moan all you want, you're alone. But if you share a space with someone, or you're in like a public setting, and you moan when you piss, dude, I'm sorry, you've officially become the worst human being I've ever met in my life, and I have no intents to meet you. That's so terrible. That is so awful. Just whip it, whipping it out, just taking a piss, and then you just, oh, like, just stop. <laughs> Don't do that. It's fucking disgusting. It makes me so uncomfortable as another human being sharing this space with you. Because, my God, can you imagine if that was just the norm? Imagine if I was the outlier of the situation, being the dude that hates that there are dudes that do that. And the maximum amount of people were like, oh, yeah, no, we all do this. Can you imagine just that fucking symphony coming from any public restroom? It'd be terrible. I would hate that. I would hate it so much. I would I would just go piss in the woods at that point. I would not want to be near that situation. And I know that this is going to hurt people because this is the second time where the podcast has talked about peeing specifically in relation to having male member parts. And I don't care. It's my podcast. I can do what I want. You know, I could sit here and snort cocaine for 30 minutes straight and then tell you the story about bears and you'd be like, okay, cool. And you'd have to accept it. Because <laughs> it's not your podcast. It is made for you. But it is my podcast. And I get a say. A say? Huh? That makes it sound like other people are getting says. I get the say in what occurs. And you all, you have to deal with it. You just have to accept it. Sorry. It's just how it goes. Uh... I really wrote that down. That tells you how many times I've had to hear it, okay? I wrote it down in my notes. That wasn't like an off the top of my head, like just on the cuff type thing, type thought, you know? No, that is, I have been walking around and having to hear just so many people just, just, oh, uh, like, stop, stop, get some help. <laughs> I... I do not know enough about Michael Jordan to keep bringing that quote back up. If someone asked me what team he played on, I'd just be like, sorry, man. I will go jump in a ditch now. <laughs> Welcome to the gym, the space gym. That's all I know. I know Michael Jordan played basketball. That's, you know, I, I believe he at some point tried to make his way to baseball. <laughs> Which I think is so funny. Because can you imagine just... Mm, I've gotten too good for this sport. Let me go try this one out. <laughs> that's that's so funny to be. That's I can't I can't even think of any other situation or like person that that could like could, that could relate to that. Cause who else could? <laughs> who else is just out there like? Hmm. Yes. I think I've gotten good enough at this. Let me check out this stuff. Like no, no one is doing that. Not a single soul. I've gotten good enough at YouTube. Let me go be a filmmaker. Like, huh? That'd be cool. That would be that would be a nice little goal to have, you know? Just to fuck, just soar up there. Like, yeah, I've gotten really good at entertaining people with these three-minute-long videos on TikTok or whatever. Let me go make the leap to being a movie director. Don't do that. <laughs> There's a lot more skills and things that you need. Don't just bring your audience and hope that that works. That would be a terrible way to go about it, to be honest. Um, to leap from a smaller platform. Like, we'll use the TikTok example. I hate TikTok. I don't have TikTok. I know many people that I know that have TikTok, and they keep trying to convince me to get it. And my response is the same thing every time. That if a TikTok was made with my involvement, it would be entirely to advertise this stuff. So, like, the podcast, the gaming YouTube, the Twitch, uh, social medias. It would be made entirely to advertise that. And I'd let it be run by someone else. Because I couldn't do it. I would not be able to. That's that's not the thing for me. If there's some weird, random PR rep human being that I know that has decided that that is their life goal, is to try and get me out to the masses through TikTok, cool. Talk to me. My social media is linked in the link 
in the description. How many times could I say link? Just three times. That's all. Uh, but yeah, no. If you're if you're like a creator over there, because I don't know what the cap for those videos are. Every time someone tries to send me one and I open it up in the Instagram chat, it's like either you're 15 seconds long or you're like six minutes, and there's there's like no in between. I got sent. <laughs> This person now knows immediately who they are, because of, <laughs> to be very specific. I got sent this, the entire scene from uh, Happy Feet, of them singing Under Pressure. <laughs> and I don't remember the context of that scene occurring in, like, the movie. And it's a very beautiful scene. It's done very well. Like, I hate that it's done so well, because I just, I can't get over Happy Feet sometimes. Is there something uncanny about when the animation for all the creatures meets the, like, weird, not-animated kind of live-action humans um, that are in that movie? In case you forgot, because I don't think those humans are animated. They move too human in comparison to the animated creatures. But <laughs> it was the entire scene of them singing Under Pressure. And I was just like, "There's what is the, what is the maximum length? for a video on TikTok. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I was like, this is a ridiculous length. <laughs> and it was very goofy. I was like, I'm glad to see this scene again. Like, I guess. <laughs> it was very funny. I was getting sent other things too. And it was so weird because I got sent something before that and it was much shorter. So I finished it and then I saw the, the link come in for the next one and I watched that one. And that one took so long that two more links came in, and I was still watching the scene. I was like, what is the length? What is the capping point for a TikTok? Anywho. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't use it. If someone else wants to, on my behalf, with my permission, don't just go doing it on your own. That would upset me. That would hurt me, because I'm sure someone would then do something dumb, and I'd have to pay the price for it, and I don't want to pay the price for it. Okay? I'm... Casual, casual man, man of casualness. I'm just doing things, baby. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's. <laughs> yeah, um, this one wasn't sent to me. This is one I've been seeing a lot. That's right, I'm moving on to the next thing, uh, which has brought an interesting set of questions because and it also brought me another topic so i'm gonna go into that one first because the next one is more speculation than it is talking about um no it's a, it's talking about a bit I'm, whatever i'm gonna sip a water uh but i saw something and it's people talking about uh this jessica rabbit costume change i don't know where this ride is in fact, I'm going to Google it right now, because I didn't know there was a Who Framed Roger Rabbit ride, and I partially assume it's a universal thing. Who Framed Roger Rabbit ride. And by that, I mean universal over in, um... Oh, no, it's a Disneyland thing. Ah, okay, so Roger Rabbit's car... car Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Not cartoon... Cartoon is a dark ride located at the Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland theme parks. So it's a Disney ride. I didn't know that. But um, people have been... I've been seeing a bunch of people, like, posting and talking about um, the fact that they've changed Jessica uh, Rabbit's outfit. And I was very confused, but I guess originally, like, until this changed, the outfit she's had within the ride has been, you know, the OG red dress that she has in the movie when she makes her appearance, and just the one that's iconic to the character, and now they've changed it so that she's wearing, like, a trench coat and fedora like a detective, because she was, um, and she is, and she's a very proud detective, detective but it's very weird, because it kind of, it, it kind of feels like they've Ada Wonged her, uh, for those that don't know, Resident Evil, um, check that out, playing that. It's fun. Um, <laughs> the Resident Evil franchise, Ada Wong, she's a constant recurring character, usually opposite uh, Leon S. Kennedy, 
but she makes her first appearance in the second game. And when she first appears in the OG game, I think it's just red dress. Like, it, it, it's just her and her, the iconic red dress. Like, if you look up Ada Wong, you're gonna find her in that outfit. Um, and when they remade the second game, they changed it so that when she first starts to, like, appear, it's her in this, like, trench coat and fedora. And then, like, eventually, by the end of the game, when, when you have to play as her, there it is. When she, when Leon gets shot and you switch and have to play as Ada, she puts the trench coat on him to, like, keep him warm. And so it's finally revealed that she's been wearing the iconic red dress the whole time, right? And it feels like that's what they're doing to Jessica Rabbit. That's my opinion. I know a bunch of people are very upset about it, and it's very dumb, because it's, it's probably the same set of people that were upset about the changes to Lola Bunny over in Space Jam 2 because they kept her design more akin to how it is in the animated stuff right now that they're doing, like, over in the shows, uh, rather than <laughs> the oddly sexy bunny of OG Space Jam with Michael Jordan. Hey, you get to come back up, Michael Jordan. Who would have guessed? That was not coincidence. That was not coincidence? That was coincidence. I know words. Um, and it's just very goofy. But it all, it feels weird, you know? Because at this point, it just, it makes less sense to change it, you know? And this is where people are going to either be on my side or be divided by what I'm about to say. But I feel like the Jessica Rabbit red dress should not be the point of, like, change if you want to modernize her character. I feel like changing something iconic about a character in the hopes of, like, changing that character for the modern time is it's very weird to me i don't have many i don't have any examples lined up because i, w I didn't think about about this idea in my head but um it's sort of like when people when people talk about like making certain characters for like movies and whatnot and then people come around and they're like oh uh, actually why don't we do this with this character like james bond right everyone was talking about how they would love to see I don't. I haven't seen No Time to Die yet, but I know there is a very prominent character in the film. She's an African American woman, and people were like, "We'd love to see her as James Bond." No. No, and here's why. You shouldn't make James Bond a woman. That was not what the Ian Fleming novels ever had in mind. But if you want to make a globe-trotting spy movie, where a woman is James Bond-esque, but is not James Bond, that is what you should do. You shouldn't go about, I know it's a different venue technically, like than the Jessica Rabbit costume change, but you shouldn't change the character to fit like a modern audience. You should just give them a new character, right? Don't get rid of, of Jessica Rabbit's iconic red dress for this trench coat and fedora nonsense. Just give us a new, cool female character to re to take her place. Not take her place, but to be the modernization, essentially. Let Jessica Rabbit continue to be how she was, and give us someone else. That's how it should be. There I go. I've made. Uh, that's the point I was trying to get to. You know, because it's funny. Because that's like people were were coming at Daniel Craig, because when that was mentioned to him, he said no. That's a terrible idea, and everyone was just taking that bit of the clip and just spreading it around and they were like oh he hates the idea of a woman being james bond and if you listen to the rest of his statement he says no that's a terrible idea that just let them have their own thing L create a strong female <laughs> spy character that isn't james bond and that should exist and he's right there's always this like weird idea that people have that we should take these characters right and like make them fit for 20 different people, right? That's why comic books have so many different worlds, you know? Because they've got versions of characters, like, everywhere to fit different needs. But <laughs> there's a reason that after a certain point, no one cares about the other characters named Peter Parker within the Marvel comic universe. 
which I stated in real life still spells MCU, which I was trying to avoid. Um, there's a reason people stop focusing in on everyone else named Peter Parker, and everyone enjoys characters like Ben Riley, Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy. Like, <laughs> there, there, there's a reason for all of that, and it's because we like to see other people take up, like, a version of the mantle. And, like, yeah, that's them still taking up the idea of Spider-Man. But it's their own take on it, you know? It's not all of them donning the iconic red-blue suit. You know, that's why Miles is in black and red. It's why Gwen has the, the, the white and pink with the blue ballet shoes. Like, they're making it their own. And we need to do more of that, in a sense, and, like, expand upon that. Because, like, that's a little thing. Those are all still Spider-Men and Spider-Women. Um, but we should go out and make our own cool female spy. Just as cool as James Bond is, but not. she doesn't need to be James Bond. That's, that's no. <laughs> James Bond is James Bond, and this should be a new cool IP that starts its own line of things. Duh. <laughs> it can be just as fun. And, like, don't, don't do that thing. And that's what I've noticed, is that a lot of the issues that seem to arise is that there's never any... There's none of the, the cool, iconic fun of a James Bond movie in, in the spy movies, like, with women that have been trying to start something. They all take it very, very seriously. And I'll be honest... Don't. <laughs> Don't take it seriously. Have fun with it. Enjoy what you're doing. If you're not enjoying the thing that you're creating, then why are you creating it? Don't create it because you know people want to see it. Create it because you want to see it. Um, what a weird, tangential spiral that has just spun out of my mouth based off of the fact that they've changed Jessica Rabbit's costume in uh, Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. Uh, but it's it's the correct thing. Don't don't change it to try to like create a new history. You know, don't do that. But change it to improve. And if you can't change it to improve, then make something else. Nice. That's a pretty solid sense. I hope someone writes that down. <laughs> Put that in the comments. Um, that's a that's a good one. Um, but yeah. That's just, that's how I look at it. Don't try to, don't change Jessica Rabbit's costume to ignore what came before. Because if that's why you're doing it, you should just make a new character. And that's the truth. That is the truth. How did I miss this ride? I went to Disneyland once on a field trip with my choir. The more that that statement left my mouth, the more it felt very funny. And I don't remember seeing that ride. I definitely saw the Cars one. Cars Land? USA? Kind of fun. I won't lie. The Bugs Life Pavilion section? Very weird. Very, very weird. I felt uncomfortable there. Um, yeah. No, that's a... That's a, that's a, Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. Because uh, I think that's also why um, Scoob... <laughs> didn't do too well they made a weird collection of changes uh to the characters to like give them a new backstory essentially like they they redid their origin and then gave them a new like futuristic thing and it's like no that's not that's not how scooby-doo does its stuff and it's so interesting because like they essentially made it a superhero movie by the end of its film by the end of the film not its film um, and it's so weird because no one wanted that for Scooby-Doo, which is so funny because we've seen how all the Scooby-Doo movies go, and there usually is something kind of crazy that might occur during the run of the film. If you look at the, the OG ones that people like to run back to, uh, from the 90s and, and 2000 or whatever, you've got Cyber Chase Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, and then um, the one with the aliens. I can't remember what it's properly called. But those three films, some insane things happened in those movies. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, they met werecat people. Like, real werecat people. 
and there were real Confederate zombies. <laughs> there were genuinely actual zombies in that movie who came to their rescue against the Werecat people. There was, like, voodoo and stuff. It was a whole thing. Actual events occurred in that movie, but you know what? Because it was Scooby-Doo animated, no one cared. That was fine. It made sense somehow. Cyber chase? Human beings were sucked into a cybernetic world, Tron style. Not not like you're wearing a headset and you, if you take it off, they'll die. Like, no, not Attack on Titan. <laughs> Wrong anime. What is that one called? Sword Out Online. Not Sword Out Online. Like, they got Troned. And by the end of it, they still unmasked a human being who genuinely sent them into the machine, like, to mess up someone else's game. It's so funny. It's so funny because, like, it it was like, yeah, okay, cool. We've unmasked this human being who somehow magically managed to figure out how to send real people into a video game. What? And then in the alien one, they were being chased the whole movie by, like, Great, little gray aliens that turned out to be like actual just people in suits but then like the two characters that they had joined them for the movie were real aliens that like went home by the end of the film it was a whole thing and somehow those seem less insane than having this big like superhero epic and you know why because it was concentrated in one space scooby-doo on zombie island took place on an island that you had to get to by a little boat little fairy had to take you to the island. It didn't it didn't affect the whole world. Cyber chase? That was in a computer. <laughs> one computer in one scientific laboratory. And that's it. That was the whole space. The alien one, I think was in Nevada, cuz of course. <laughs> of course. Like what what do you expect? Even the live action movies, right? Which had real demons in the first one. Let's never forget that. There were real demons in the first Scooby-Doo movie. The live action one. With Matthew Lillard. The best Shaggy in existence. That whole cast is great. I loved Freddie Prince Jr. as Fred. I loved Sarah Michelle Gellar as Daphne. And did I just blank on the name for Velma? Yes. Even though I... Oh, Linda Cardellini. I knew it. Duh. That that was all off the top of my head. Thank you very much. I remembered all of their names. Because I love that cast in that movie. They're fantastic. But that first movie has real demons. And and scrappy dude sucking souls into his body to become a big monster. (laughs) It's a whole thing. But you know what? It all took place on Spooky Island with Rowan Atkinson playing robot scrappy dude And then the real him who had been trapped in a hole. The whole movie, apparently. And then you know what we had after that? We had the second one, where Mad Scientist Man managed to figure out how to turn all the costumes from people that they had defeated into real monsters. Real monsters. These were real mon- These were people in costumes from, like, the show. Which I never thought about the fact that that means that the movie, the live-action movies, those two were set in the same canon as the OG show. That's kind of funny. And he turned those costumes into real things. They Like, he brought them to life, and they were attacking the Scooby gang, which was funny, because they should have been attacking everyone. But <laughs> even then, solving all that craziness, it just took place in Coolsville. Is that, is that what it's called, right? Coolsville? The world's most on-the-nose name? a fictional town in an anime in a, like a <laughs> cartoon universe coolsville <laughs> it all took place in coolsville it didn't leave coolsville it didn't affect the earth only the people of coolsville were upset with the scooby gang right and that that's it but when you start to like do this globe trotting like marvel-esque adventure like you lose sight of what makes this so fun and it's the concentration on just this one thing. And I think that's where Scoob failed. In addition to not casting any of the people that had been doing the voices of these characters for the past 20 years. Hey, I'm just saying, Matthew Lillard as Shaggy has been a thing in those animated movies, like, pretty much since he played it in live action. He, he has just kind of taken over, 
and I'm quite fine with that. And the fact that he wasn't in this movie was a sin. An actual sin. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing on the docket here. So this is the one that I saw people posting about, people I know personally posting about um, when it was first starting up. And I don't know how to feel about it yet because we still don't know what's going there. But Universal Orlando is, clo not is, has. They have closed their Shrek 4D um, experience thing that has been there for God knows how long, right? And the reason everyone is posting about it, besides the initial, like, oh no, they're closing Shrek 4D, how sad, is the fact that um, a lot of the posts from Universal and, like, the signs that are there, if you go into the park, seem to imply this idea that what is going to replace Shrek 4D is something Minions-related, aka Despicable Me. If you don't know Despicable Me... You're you're living a good life. You're 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 living a good life. The first movie was kind of okay. I think they were trying to repeat the formula of how much people enjoyed Megamind. Because Megamind is a great movie. If you haven't watched Megamind, you should watch Megamind. Uh that is genuinely a fantastic film. But um they were trying to like kind of repeat that same type of feeling, in a sense, it kind of feels like. And now, ever since Despicable Me came out, they've sort of just been using it as the go-to. It's, it's like, it's become Universal's, like, image, almost. You can't go anywhere without seeing those little yellow minions, okay? They've got their own dumb ride, their toys are everywhere, they keep making movies. There are three Despicable Me films, there is one, uh, <laughs> is there three? Yeah, there's three of them. There's a Minions film. There's a movie about the Minions that no one asked for. No one asked for that. But people are, but they're still making stuff. And now, the based on posts and like signs, people are a little concerned that they're about to get another Minions-related IP at Universal. And hey, Universal, you should listen to the people. They don't want this. That is not what they want. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> We've had enough. <laughs> okay? There's only so many times you can hear just out of the blue someone go, Banana! Before you start to just murder. <laughs> it, it, it's an insanity thing trying to like keep up with that. Just... It makes you lose your mind. There's like There's nothing good that comes of it. You're just like, I'm gonna go insane. I'm gonna go insane. You feel like the schizophrenic in the John Mulaney bit, the salt and pepper diner. You feel like them. Um, put something else. There's so many wonderful IPs under Universal's control. That's the thing. There's There are some really good ones. They could put in a Scott Pilgrim ride. There would be exactly 10 people that would know what Scott Pilgrim is. But you know what? Those 10 people would be ecstatic. They would be paying so much money to keep going into your park. And it's me. I'm the 10 people. <laughs> I would gladly, if you set up a ride for Scott Pilgrim versus the world, I'd be there every day. Dude, I would be having my Scott meal. I don't even know what that would be. What would the Scott Pilgrim meal look like? I want to know. Give me that, okay? If I saw that in Universal, that'd be so cool. But there's also 10,000 other things that you could be doing. There's so many movies under universal control. You know what? <laughs> it's like, even just animated films. Like, if you go and Google universal animated movies, which I'm saying like that, not so you can type it incorrectly, but because I wanted to type it correctly, you know? There's so many films. Yeah, you get, like, every single Land Before Time movie. But then you, you, and like Curious George, but then you get some of the other fun ones. You get Hercules and Xena. You get the Tales of Despero. There's a Van Helsing movie. I didn't even know that, that there was an animated Van Helsing movie to, to tie into the live action one, both starring Hugh Jackman. There's that Chronicles of Riddick animated movie. There's at least 10,000 more that aren't showing up, so I have to go click this list. <laughs> 
Oh, there's a color legend? What does this mean? That's so funny. DreamWorks. There, there's the whole existence of DreamWorks. I forgot about for a hot second. That's what I meant to say first. Like, there's so many things under the DreamWorks, like, just life. <laughs> The Lorax, I forgot that that was them when they read the Lorax. Paranorman, I enjoyed Paranorman. My brain has always thought that Paranorman was, um... Is that Tim Burton? No, but it felt like it because of the way that they did it. And I think that was the intention. Kubo and the Two Strings, that movie's amazing. Secret Life of Pets, like, there are so many other things. How to Train Your Dragon, like, come on, guys. Come on. Don't let it be Boss Baby. That will that will hurt me. Um, if, it's, if it's Boss Baby related. If you go over to, like, DreamWorks, you know, you've got your stuff like Madagascar. We know it was a Shrek thing and it's closed. Rise of the Guardians, in case anyone forgot about that. The Penguins movie. Shark Tale. Turbo. Spirit. The Road to El Dorado. That would be so cool to see something for Road to El Dorado in there. Maybe... Give us a ride where you go through the end of that movie where everything is, like, going crazy. That'd be so awesome. Flushed away. The Prince of Egypt. Guys, if you haven't watched The Prince of Egypt, what are you doing with your life? Seriously, stop listening to me. Go watch The Prince of Egypt. That is the peak of animated movies. That is the peak. And no one can convince me otherwise. We peaked at Prince of Egypt, and then Shrek came out, and the world lost its mind. The world lost its mind. We had such a weird cultural shift from these big animated musical epics, right? We went from that to fart jokes. And I can't blame Mike Myers, because he was not originally attached to the project. Um, it was someone else. Um, but I just, I can't. We made such a shift, and because of that, the humor of the world shifted, and we don't get any of those cool, fun ones like like the Prince of Egypt anymore, um, which we should. Duh. That was also such a peak of animation style. It's so beautiful. What did we do? Where did we go wrong? Many places. We went wrong in many places. But <laughs> go watch The Prince of Egypt. That is a great film. Um, was I about to say? Yeah, but just don't let it be minions. Don't let it be minions. It literally, it could be anything. You could put anything there. Anything at all that you wanted. And so long as it wasn't minions, we'd be okay with it. Dude, if you wanted to <laughs> put in another Fast and Furious related thing, let it be the 4D ride. We're going to smell the Corona every time Vin Diesel takes a sip. <laughs> Even if you put that in. It would be so much better than if you do anything, anything involving the minions again. Stop. <laughs> Let them die. <laughs> I know they can't, but just imagine that they could and let them die. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> just stop putting minions everywhere. Stop letting them be the names, just the image to represent your brand. Do you know how hard it hurts me to know that if I watch an older, like, DreamWorks film. I'll see that little DreamWorks dude sitting in the clouds, right? And he'll be fishing. <laughs> I miss that guy. I don't see him anymore. You know what I see? I see the stupid minion walk out. And then the words illumination pops up. And he goes, illumination! And I'm just like, give me the simplistic beauty that was Fisher Boy. Doing his little fisherman thing, right? I want to see him do his little Fisher thing, right? He was catching stars. He was so cool. That music behind him was epic. Give me that again. Give me that logo. I don't want illumination. No one wants illumination. Well, we all want light. We just don't want minions. Yeah. No one knows what's replacing the Shrek ride right now, except for Universal. We don't even know if anything's replacing it. For all we know... It could just be closing. That would be insane. But it, it could just straight up be closing. And that would be really sad. 
and if they just put nothing there, or if they put, like, a shop or something, like, that would be really disappointing, but it's going to be replaced with something. We just don't know what yet, and I really hope it's not Minions. God, I hope it's not Minions. I'll be so upset. <sighs> I'm going to close this out um, with a bit of a, a downer piece of information, because I personally find that I think it is best that I just put this out there. Uh, I've mentioned before that I have a girlfriend, but I no longer do. We have separated, and that is okay. She wants to focus on the things that she needs to for her career path for college, and I'm going to continue to do what I do. Uh, but I just didn't want to see anyone start to question, like, oh, why isn't he mentioning his girlfriend anymore? Or have anyone bring it up? Or and I don't want people to go and be fucking rude. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that shit. All right? It's perfectly fine. It happens all the time. It happens to literally so many people around the world. But I just wanted to mention it here so that everyone was aware that that was the case. I don't need any condolences or any shit like that. I'm just cutting out the middleman, essentially. Not to steal words from Childish Gambino's camp, but why have a middleman? You know, if I put it out into the world, then it came directly from me. There's no way for it to get skewed, and there's no power that it could ever hold over me based on someone's misinterpretation. So that's what I'm doing here. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Sorry to end on such a downer note after the humorous chunk of portion that was uh, talking about what's happening with the Shrek ride. Shrek, it's not even a ride. It's a show, I think, but I don't remember. Uh, but thank you guys again for listening. Make sure to tune in next week where we'll be getting part three of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. Uh, what chapters will that entail? I don't know. I just know it'll be fun. Uh... If you'd like, and you can't wait until next week, make sure you go and you check out the link at the description. <laughs> at the description? In the description. Check out the link in the description. That's where you're going to find... Um... What do I do? <laughs> I have a gaming YouTube channel. I post there daily. I have just finally, as of yesterday... Not yesterday, the day before, because this is coming out on Monday, so Saturday. I finally uh, adjusted the... What do you call it? The homepage, essentially, when you go to it, you can find two big playlists that are set up uh, that contain every single video. One contains every single video from year one of the channel, uh, which was October 1st, 2020, all the way till September 30th, 2021. Uh, there's like 370 videos, which is very weird, uh, until I recounted and realized that there were some days where I had to post two videos because something happened in the midst of a video, and I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, <laughs> and year two has started. That started October 1st, 2021. It's still ongoing. Uh, it's going to get continuously updated every single day along with everything else. Um, and I'm just, I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of all the work I'm putting in there. I'm proud of the Twitch uh, stuff that's happening. I'm streaming on Twitch, in case you didn't know, but at this point, if you're listening, you probably do. <laughs> um, and... I'm, I'm changing up the games over there. Not all of them, just one. I only play two. It had been Hades and Final Fantasy XIII 2 for a while. Final Fantasy XIII 2 is staying, uh, but it's being swapped. It's not being swapped. Hades is being swapped uh, with something else. Because uh, I, I just need to take a break from that game. Uh, personal stuff. And by personal stuff, I mean in connected to the other thing that I said after the Shrek thing. Uh, but yeah. Thank you guys again for listening. I've been Matthew Allen. This has been the What A Thought Podcast, episode 17. Uh, what was it called? Fractured, I think. That's right. I gave it a name before I recorded it, rather than afterwards, because I knew I was probably going to mention what I just mentioned. And uh, it's also just a fun title. It's a really cool title. Something called just Fractured. That's a really dope thing. You think I'm going to talk about a broken bone. I don't have any broken bones, knock on wood. Um, never had any. I've had surgery, though, on my bones. 
but I'll get into that next time. Uh, bye, everyone. Have a wonderful Monday.